Hi, my name is Rickard, and in this short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get rid of a white background in Photoshop while retaining the drop shadow. So if you want to follow along in this tutorial, go ahead and in the description, I've included the two assets that I use. Also, I'm including a link to my Photoshop starter kit, which is an entire pack of assets that you can use to get yourself started in Photoshop compositing. All right, let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is go to File Open. And I've got a photo here of a nice flower a, that was shot against a white background. Now I really like the shadow, so what I wanna do is I want to retain that shadow even though I wanna replace the background. So how do we do that? The first thing we're gonna do is select the flower and separate it from the background. Now there's many ways that you can do selections and I have a bunch of other YouTube videos on selection, but for this, I'm going to go on the magic wand tool, which is W on the keyboard. Um, and then I'm gonna click on the select subject and that's gonna do most of the work for me. And on an image like this, where it's shot against a white background, this tool is really great because it does do mostly a good job. Next, I'm gonna click on Select and Mask to bring up our selection dialog here. You can see here the parts that are white, um, those should not be in our selection. So with this tool here selected, I'm gonna hold down Option, just kind of clean up this. Um, I wanna also go in here, select that, select out this. Just kind of cleaning up what was missed here. Also, you can see part of the um, stem here wasn't selected as I'm going up. You can see more of the right side there being selected. Uh, but that's not bad there. Let's hold down option again. Option is temporarily changing my tool to subtract from the selection. I'm gonna go onto my edge tool, just clean that up as well. Like that. Maybe a little bit there. And here, that should not be selected, so let's minus that out. And then plus this back in there. There you go, that's done a better job there. And let's get rid of this as well. All right, so that's not bad. Now I'm gonna turn on Smart Radius. Turn that up to five pixels. That's just gonna help clean up that edge. And hit OK. This is a rather crude selection, but you know, if, if your composite or your image requirements require a better selection, you can always do that. All right, so I'm gonna take my background layer, make it its own layer and just add a mask on that. Okay, so now the tricky part, how do we get this drop shadow to be its own layer and to have transparency and to not be gray? We want it to be so when we put it on, a different image, it still retains the qualities of this drop shadow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this background layer here, make a copy of it, and I can do that by dragging it down in here or also just hitting Command J on the keyboard. That's gonna make a copy. All right, next I'm gonna turn this off for now. What I wanna do as my first step is turn this into black and white. So I'm gonna go to Image Adjustments, Black and White, which is Option Shift Command B and the default looks quite good let's hit okay now you'll notice here if i zoom in that this background is not pure white it looks like it was taken on a white piece of paper that had some texture so the first thing we're going to do is just make this shadow um, we want the white to be pure white so let's go to image adjustments curves and you can see here in the histogram this represents our white part of the image, and you can see that the actual white starts right about there. So the easy way to do this is just drag this to right where that white starts, and that's gonna do what we want. So let's hit okay. There you can see now our whites are pure white. We still have our drop shadow there. Next, I'm gonna go to channels, and this is the tricky part. This is the nice little trick. What we're gonna do is hold down Command, and as we hover over 
our RGB channel here, which is our top channel, you can see when I hold down command, it's adding that little selection box around my hand. And what that's going to do is it's going to select all the white in the layer. So we're going to do that. And there you can see all my white is selected. I'll go back to layers, make a new layer here. And then I'm going to invert my selection, which is shift command I. And then in this new layer, I want to make sure my foreground color is black. And then I'm going to hold down option and delete to fill in my selection with black. And you can see it just got a whole lot darker there. And then we're going to deselect, which is command D. Okay, so now I wanted to see where, like, kind of the state of my shadow. And it's hard to see here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer. We'll just fill this with white. Now to fill with my background color, instead of option delete, I'm going to do command delete. So there you go. So now we've got a white layer. You can see our drop shadow there. Now you can see we've got a couple dots here and some gray there. If you want to get a quick assessment of your layer, you can do command T. And that'll show you that my drop shadow layer is actually this large. And I don't want it to be. I really just want it to be this area here. So let's go ahead and hit escape or click on this button here. And to make this a little more obvious, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this layer here and invert it. So let's go to, where's my invert? It's command I. So there you go, that's going to turn it black. And we'll do the same with this, Command I, that's going to turn it white. So there you can see right away those white dots there, a little bit of gray here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a mask to this layer here. Make sure my foreground color is black. And then go on my gradient tool. I want to make sure here that I'm on the foreground to transparent. And I want to make sure I'm on a linear gradient. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and drag and basically everything left of where I started my gradient is going to be pure black and everything on the right of where my cursor is is going to be transparent. So meaning it's not going to affect that mask. So there you can see everything on the left there disappeared. Now I'm going to do the same thing up here, same thing over here. Same thing down here. What I'm doing is I'm just dragging toward without actually affecting the drop shadow. I'm just dragging toward it. Now I can also zoom in a little closer. Go on my brush tool. Again, I've got black and I'm on a soft brush here. I'm just going to paint any little white dots I see here. And that looks quite nice. And let's go Command O. Okay, so now what I can do is I'm going to go here on my mask and say apply layer mask. Now if I do command T, you can see I've now contained that drop shadow. So it's just there. All right, so now we're going to do command I again, turn that black, command I. And now if we turn this layer back on, so we've got this layer, which we can call drop shadow. And you can adjust the opacity of that if you like. So maybe we can Turn it to, let's say, 75. That looks a little closer to our original. And I can select both of these layers, right mouse click, and say Convert to Smart Object. And now if I go down here to where my background is and go File, Place Embedded, I've got just this uh, white wood background here. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. And there you can see we now have our flower. And it's got its nice drop shadow. It's fully transparent. I don't need, this is on normal. It doesn't need a drop shadow that's on multiply or anything else. So that is the simplicity of deleting a white background while retaining that nice drop shadow. All right, I hope that was helpful. Please subscribe to my channel. I come out with a new tutorial every week. I also have some awesome courses that take you through entire composites, uh, showing you the workflow and a whole bunch of techniques in Photoshop. You can check those out at nuclei.com. And otherwise, I will see you next week. Here are some other videos you can check out.